Hey there, you're watching Wildflower Video Tips. I'm Lindsay Moe, and today I'm going to show you all the different gear I use to make my recipe videos. There's a lot of different gear that goes into creating recipe videos. What I'm going to share with you today is where I'm at right now. I kind of hesitated to share this with you because it's not the top notch, most professional level, but it's also not the intro level. So I'm kind of in between right now. Um, this is definitely not where I plan to be a year or two from now as far as gear goes, and it's definitely not where I was a year or two ago. So when I first started out doing videos, I basically made sure I had a camera that shot video and I had a very tiny, I had one of those Lowell Ego lights that I was shooting videos with. And that is definitely not enough light for shooting a video. I would set that up across from a mirror to help bounce it and just hope for the best. And they turned out pretty grainy, not super great. Um, but it kind of got the job done. So the camera I was shooting on at that point was this Canon 5D Mark II, and this is still my primary photography camera. I love it. I think it works really well. It does not have tracking autofocus, which I like to use for my overhead videos sometimes, but I do still use it for my side angle shot. So I will set this up on my tripod and set it off to the side and it grabs those shots a little more close up of things getting poured into a bowl or something getting stirred. The primary camera I shoot my videos on now is a Canon 80D and I love this one because two things. One, it has tracking autofocus so it can keep up when I'm shooting overhead videos and also if I'm shooting videos of myself it is very difficult to focus on yourself and then get in the frame. So this is super helpful. Also, it has a flip out screen, which lets you see yourself or what you're working on if you have your camera set up high shooting an overhead video. As far as lenses go, I have this Canon 50 millimeter, which when I'm shooting videos, I will keep on my 5D Mark II and I use that to shoot the side angles. I also use this frequently for photography for whatever that's worth. It is a fixed lens, so it will not zoom in on anything. You need to move your camera closer or farther away to frame the shot the way you want. The other lens I have is a Canon EF 24 to 70 millimeter 2.8 to USM lens. And this one I had to save up a long time for. It's pretty expensive, but I love it. It takes beautiful photos and video and it really is so helpful when shooting overhead food videos because I can zoom in closer on something without having to adjust the camera position. And the 24 millimeter aspect of it really helps make sure everything gets in frame. I can now take process shots while I'm doing videos instead of having to move to a different area. This is so helpful, so time-saving, and I love my 24 to 70. I would love to get a 100 millimeter lens, mostly for photography, but also for, you know, those close up hero shots at the beginning and the ends of recipe videos. I currently have this Canon extension tube, which I attach to my 50 millimeter lens, and that acts kind of like a 100 millimeter. So it's getting me by for now, but I definitely like to upgrade to the 100 millimeter. The tripod that I use is an Ulta Pro 263 AT. I love this one. It's so sturdy, which is super important when you're dealing with expensive cameras. It also has a hand grip, so you can turn it all sorts of different directions and it's super easy to do. And it has an articulating arm. So I used to shoot all my videos primarily with this tripod and I would set the arm up so it was as high and as overhead as it would go with the camera on it, obviously, and I didn't love this because the lights would kind of shadow with the legs. So I recently purchased this overhead bar, which I can attach my camera to. I also don't love this because it's not quite tall enough. You can see I am currently setting it up on top of some boxes, which is very unsafe but it's getting the job done, it's getting everything in the frame, and it's working. So for now, that's okay. And I know, sometimes we just need to do what we need to do to get it done, and we're all just trying to get by. So that's 
my overhead setup right now. I actually bought another cheaper tripod. I can't remember what brand it was, but it was a super cheap tripod. I thought I'll just buy this and I'll use it as my side camera. And I sent it back. I didn't love it. It was super flimsy and just didn't feel like a safe way to handle my camera. So I'm sticking with the Ulta Pro and this overhead bar for now. And we'll see if anything else comes up. I would actually like to get a C-stand. That seems like it might be a better option for avoiding shadows and getting as high overhead as I need to. You can see currently I work on this table that I thrifted. Um, it works great both as a background if I want to, but I'll usually put one of my food photo backdrops on top to shoot a video on. This is a really great height for me to work at. I was shooting everything on the floor, which became very uncomfortable just for my back and it was exhausting and you're cooking on the floor, so gross. But for now, this is what's working out great for me. I also purchased this monitor a few months ago. It's a newer, I think that's how you say it, I don't know. But this is a great little monitor. I actually don't use it as much as I thought I would because I got the Canon 80D, which has the flip out screen. And that really lets me see what I'm doing when I'm cooking overhead. Um, but if I didn't have the flip out screen, I would definitely use this more. Or if I needed to use my other camera and see what I was doing from the other side, that's definitely helpful. And I'll link to that down below if you think you could use one of those. You can't forget about memory cards. I recommend getting as much storage on a memory card as you can. Both of my cameras take different memory cards, even though they're both Canon. So you'll have to check to make sure whatever you're buying works with the type of camera that you have. This one is a ScanDisk 32 gigabyte. Uh, I recently bought a 64 gigabyte for my Canon 80D because it was just not handling as much as I needed to do every day. I have a lot of different backdrops I like to use. Most of them I have made myself and I can share a link to the tutorial on that in the description box below. But it's super easy to do. I just buy a few boards from Home Depot and some paint samples and go to work. I think it's so much fun to paint my own backgrounds and they turn out really well. So I also have a couple backdrops from Bessie Bakes, which I think are great. They look really nice and they're super lightweight. They're just the right size. I do find that they dent and crack really easily. I guess I'm pretty rough on my backgrounds, but I would hope that they would hold up a little better. But I do think when this one gets a little too rough for me, I'm probably gonna buy another one. So whatever that's worth, I think they're great. I also recently purchased a couple backdrops from Replica Surfaces. I don't think these are going to be big enough to use in videos, but I might be able to use them for more of the hero shots. So far, they seem a lot like the Bessie Bakes backdrops, only smaller. I also purchased a few boards from Woodville Workshop, which I haven't been able to use yet, but you might see them in the future, and that's what those are. If you're working primarily with tripods or even with your lights, I would definitely recommend buying some sort of sandbag to weigh them down. I have been super cheap about this and I have not purchased sandbags. I've been using bags of rice or almond flour or whatever I have in my cabinet to help kind of weigh it down. And you just set it um, against the legs of the tripod to help make sure things don't tip over. I don't often use a reflector in my videos. I use it more in photography, but if you don't have strong lighting or you have some harsh shadows, you could definitely get a reflector. I'll leave a link below for mine. I'm actually using it right now to reflect because I'm in kind of a dark room and it's huge. So you can get all sorts of different sizes. Make sure you measure it and know what you're getting before buying. The burner that I use for my cooking videos is this single burner. It's by Cuisinart. It's a cast iron hot plate. So I love this because it's not induction. If you have an induction burner, you need to have a certain kind of pan to go along with it. This one can handle any pan 
It's not super powerful. I feel like I need to turn it up quite a bit to really get things cooking, but that might also be because I have a fan going with it. But I think it looks really sleek and it does the job and I just love it. I think it's the best burner for overhead cooking videos. As I mentioned, I also have this little fan that I bought for like $10 at a store and it's just, I set it off to the side it keeps the steam and things from fogging up my camera lens and getting into all the little parts there. So I just turn it on anytime I'm cooking something that's getting hot and steamy. I could probably go on for a really long time about lights. I have been in a constant struggle with my lighting situation. So I don't live in a house with great facing windows. I live up against a bluff and there's a lot of shadow, a lot of trees. So I tried for a long time to shoot my videos in natural light and I had to bump the ISO up so much they were just looking really grainy and I didn't love it. It wasn't what I was going for. So as I told you, I tried with my Lowell Ego Light. That was also not enough light. If you had two, it might be okay, but I think those are kind of on their way out anyways, so I wouldn't really recommend buying them. I then bought a set of Limo Studio lights this is a set of two, and they each have one fluorescent bulb in them and then kind of a diffuser sheet that you set over the top. These are super easy to set up and take down. I often have my kids help me with that, so if that gives you an idea of the level of expertise needed on that, it's super easy. However, I don't love the actual light that comes out of these lights. I find it to be a little green and sickly looking. So I recently purchased another set of lights that I was hoping would replace those lights, but after playing around with it, I actually found that it was a really nice complement to those lights. And you can see in my setup now, I turn them towards the ceiling and turn them up all the way, bring them as close to the ceiling as I can, and let that light bounce down onto the scene. This creates a really nice, soft, natural light. And I find that the balance between the two really creates more of a natural look like I was going for. And then I will set one of the Limo Studio lights up directly across from where I'm standing and the other light I set off to the side so that it's kind of a fill light. I try to think of lights like they're actually windows. So if I was shooting in natural light, I would probably come right up against the window. And that's my thought process with setting the Limo Studio light directly across from me. The great thing about these other lights, but I will definitely link down below, is they have a color temperature dial. So I turn them a little warmer to balance out the green in the Limo Studio lights and it just comes out beautifully. I usually set my camera white balance to shade because it's kind of mimicking like a shady daylight situation. And then I usually have to do very minimal color correction in my editing. If you're shooting recipe videos, then you're also going to need to edit those recipe videos. And I recommend getting a really good computer the best you can afford when it comes to video editing because it eats up a lot of resources. I recently upgraded mine to a 2017 MacBook Pro. It's a 15 inch with a 3.1 gigahertz Intel Core i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a one terabyte solid state drive. This improved my workflow so much. It was taking me about an hour to encode, you know, a set of like four videos, and now it takes just a couple minutes. So, this is a huge time saver, and if I can spend that time doing something else that makes money, it's also a huge money maker. So I know it hurts to spend a ton of money on a computer, but I definitely recommend it. It can save you so much headache and work. I don't usually record audio with my recipe videos, but if you're doing a hosted style cooking show or you want to include some voiceover for YouTube or something like that, then you'll definitely need some sort of audio recorder outside of your camera. I don't recommend using the audio on your camera. It just isn't as high of a quality. I use this H1N recorder, which you can see I have a little windscreen to go on the top and a little tripod, and I just set it up off to the side when I'm talking, and it records really well. You can also get a lav mic to attach to it, which you would wear on your shirt, 
and that would improve the quality even more. I plan to do another video about where I find the music for my recipe videos, so definitely stay tuned for that. But currently, most of what I'm using is Epidemic Sound, which is a subscription website, which again is kind of a painful price to pay, but if you're going to be using it, it's definitely worth it because the quality is great. As I'm sure you're well aware, I edit all of my videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. I just get the Creative Cloud bundle and I find that it's so useful, so helpful. Adobe Premiere Pro has everything you need to edit your recipe videos. It's not that hard to learn. I currently use the 2019 version, even though at the time of recording this video, it's 2020 and the 2020 version is out. The 2020 version has some sort of bug in it. It doesn't seem to affect everybody, but if it does affect you, there's like no getting around it. So it destroys every project I try to do and that's not cool. I can't work like that. So 2019 is working great for me. And as soon as they fix that bug, I've got my ear to the ground and I will definitely be using the 2020 version from there. I think that's it. If you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments down below or head over to the Facebook group and I would love to start a conversation there. As you can see, I don't work in the most professional setting. This is the entryway of my home. I have to set it up and tear it down every time I make a video. So I currently try to batch about three videos at a time. I've found if I try to do more than that, the quality suffers because I'm getting too exhausted and I just wanna get through it. And if I'm doing less than that, then it doesn't quite feel worth it. So I definitely didn't start with all this equipment and I don't think you need to either. If you have a camera and a little bit of light, I definitely think you can get started making recipe videos and just add more equipment as you can afford it and need to. Thank you so much for being here. Before you leave, I would love to have you hit subscribe right below this video and click the little bell to turn on your notifications. That makes sure that you never miss a video from me. I'm here every Tuesday with a new video. Thanks again so much for being here and I'll see you next time.